Hey developers, are you making these common mistakes in your Vue applications? In this video, we're gonna explore some common mistakes that new Vue developers and even experienced Vue developers make on an everyday basis. I've had the privilege to actually look through hundreds of Vue projects, so I do see some common things that people do, and so I'm gonna explain those and how you can make fixes for those so you don't repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Hey, and if you're new here, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of all the JavaScript frameworks. So if you guys like that content and wanna learn more, make sure you click that subscribe button. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's take a look at our first example here, and this is pretty straightforward. So a lot of times when people come from React or Svelte, and they're not used to Vue and the syntax, they'll make kind of tiny mistakes like this. Depending on their setup, sometimes this will slip through. So I've seen people use single curly brackets so you might see at click handler, that happens anytime you click this button, it's supposed to trigger this alert me. People will have data methods. You can see here there's a name for Eric, but they'll just put single bracket names. And obviously uh, that won't work. And you can see here class name equals title. That's another thing that triggers me anytime I see this. I notice that it's probably a React developer coming through. Uh, that one is not a big of a deal, but you can see this is what it renders, so obviously, so this is something you would catch pretty quickly if this is the first time through, but it's, it's definitely an issue. Um, sometimes when you're just switching between React and Vue, it's really easy to forget that you need to do double curly brackets and not single curly brackets. So to fix something like this, it wouldn't be too bad. We would just need to get rid of the curly brackets here and the alert me, just surround it by quotes. Uh, in this name right here, we'll just add double curly brackets. And really class could just be called class not class name, it just could be class. So if we do all three of those, now it seems to be working. If I press me, there's an alert pop up. So this is working as we expect it. Another thing that kind of trips up people, especially if they're coming from React, is that they might be used to using uh, this way. If you have an on-click handler, they might be actually have an arrow function pointing to it and then having it uh, run this way, which you can do. It works very similar. It See, it works the exact same way but it's not necessary. You can also run alert me with an opening closing a parentheses and that works as well. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. This definitely doesn't work in React because if you do something like this, it'll just run alert me right away, but you don't have to worry about that inside Vue. Another really common mistake I see is that new developers for Vue don't really understand what to install in their IDE environment and they miss out on some really cool things that you can do. So I went ahead and slightly changed this example. In my data method here, I have now name info instead of just name, and it's an object that contains a name and age. And so if I wanted to use this inside my template, I would use double curly brackets and then do name info. And then if I hit the dot here, you can see I'm not getting any autocomplete. I really don't know what's in this object, so I'm gonna kinda have to remember what's everything's in here. And so it's not working quite the way I expect it. Now, if I hit, if I save it here, you could see here's an object appearing here, but what happens if I just want the name or I just want the age? So this is where it goes back to installing extensions. Now this could be different in your IDE if you're using a different one, but I'm assuming most of you guys are using VS Code. So if you just search for view, the one that always pops up and has millions of installs is this view uh, syntax highlighting for Vue.js, and this is great, but it doesn't have some of those really nice things like the, the auto completion, the sensing that we're in a template. So really the two extensions I highly recommend if you're installing a Vue 2 or Vue 3 app, there's two, there's one called Vitor. If you look at here, it's this one right here. And the way it works, it has the Vue language services, has the terminal inter interface. It works really great. I usually recommend this for Vue 2 projects. Uh, you can use it in Vue 3, but the one I really like for Vue 3 is called Volar. If you look at Volar or just look up Vue language features, it has the same thing. It has, it has set up for Vue 2, it, it supports Vue 3, it's really great for TypeScript support, it has those language services that you want. So if I come back over here and I enable this, and I come back over to my app view, now if I try to do the double curly brackets, name info, now I actually get the auto completion. I can see there's an age, there's a name. And this is so, so helpful as you get farther and farther along into your view journey. You're using this all the time. It also detects issues. It'll give you more errors. Yeah, definitely try to install the right extensions. 
And we're gonna talk about more about extensions here in a second. Okay, so here's another example of some really common mistakes I see. So if you can see right here from the left-hand side, I have an export default, I have a name, a data, have its returning name, and then really is all it says hello world and then it repeats hello 10 times. So this is a very trivial example. But you can notice some weird issues. We have some weird spacing here. It doesn't quite look right. There's also, we're kind of, we see this V4, but there's some common practices that we should probably be doing. And you'll notice a weird thing too, that if we make any changes to this file, let's say I add in a space here and hit enter, and it saves it, all of a sudden I get this fail to comply error, and I get a bunch of warnings and an error that says I need to vbind the key directive to require for vkey. So I'm like, okay, well that's the only error. So I'll come in here and I'll just add key equals index in here. I'll save it. Cool, it's working. But if you look here, you still have the warnings in the console. And I've been in projects where people just ignore these warnings and never fix them. And so usually see that this happens when you add in like a linter into your project, but you don't configure it correctly. So uh, an easy way to do is anytime I come into a project, I make sure my ID has a few extensions. Now I already mentioned Volar and Viter, but what I usually do is I go to this ESLint extension, this one right here. I enable this right away because it helps out and it actually start detecting the errors in my ID. And then I also install Prettier. And Prettier is really nice because it helps do some auto formatting for me. So I'll enable that as well. And then so between those two, now all of a sudden I'm starting to see in my IDE errors. And I can see right away, like this name test, there's an ESLint error with it, there's an error with this, uh, error here, some of the warnings. I have this base button, there's an error here. So usually uh, one simple way to fix it is just to make a simple space and save it and it automatically reformat to the way it's supposed to be. Well, most of the time, <laughs> you can see it, there's a problem here. But you can see it, it actually fixed a bunch of the different errors. I can do the same thing with this file if I just save it. And now I'm just left with a handful of weird errors that I should be able to fix. And so this is where it comes to the next part is I see a lot of people who have Prettier or ESLint inside their projects, but they don't have it configured correctly and they have this weird issue. I'll show you. So right here, if I mouse my, put my cursor over this squiggly line, it says I need to put a comma. So if I put a comma here and save it, the comma disappears and the squiggly line comes in. So Prettier is overriding my, uh, the ESLint settings for this project, which is really annoying and actually happens quite a bit um, if you, when you first create a project or if you're not really sure. Now, some people who get completely frustrated about this and they just remove ESLint or they remove from their editor the, uh, the plugins or they just fix only the things that are errors but you can actually fix something like this. So what we can do is we come through here and then actually before I got on to, before I started this recording, I created this old.old .old file. I'm gonna rename this to dot prettier, if I can do this right, this old right here. And then rename it to dot prettier rc.json. And what this is gonna do is I added two new settings, trailing comma all, which means that it always adds in that trailing comma and also this end of line auto and because there was a second issue. So if you come over to this base button, if you highlight over here, it says this delete carriage return ESLint error. If you look inside the documentation for Prettier, it actually it tells you if you add in this end of line auto, it kind of fixes that. So now if I kind of resave it here, it added in the comma as I expected it. Also in the base button, if I just add an empty line, it fixes all these. Uh, so it didn't fix the delete CRES lint, but I should be able to, sometimes you just have to reload the window after you put in the file. And if it works correctly, it should automatically not, not give me the error again. So what I did there, by the way, is I can do control shift in a Windows keyboard P, then it's command shift P in a Mac. I just did developer reload window and that all does is reload the window. And I always do that anytime I have some weird TypeScript errors or some other weird errors. So now if I save it here 
and I save it, it's auto formatting and I don't see the weird squiggly line errors. Also, if I go back to my console here, you can see I no longer have any warnings. So if I stop and restart it, I'm, everything works as expected. We'll just make sure it works. Yep, so there's no errors. If I make any changes, everything seems to work fine. Everything is working great. So we have now solved the issue. So make sure in your projects to install ESLint, install Prettier, and if you have some weird configuration issues from between Prettier, add that Prettier RC file with the correct information. Oh yeah, one last thing too. So in my ESLint file, you can see here I have um, this is the default that comes out with View 3 when you install with ESLint. It gives this plugin View 3 Essentials, ESL recommended, but there's also rules here. So if you want, you can actually turn off individual rules in here. You just have to look them up in the ESLint guidelines. Also, this View 3 Essential, if you look at the style guide and you go to the real categories, you can kind of figure out what this does. So it's basically this Priority A Essential, which helps prevent errors. But you can actually change this to, from View 3 Essential to View 3 Recommended or Strongly Recommended and even have like a tighter control of exactly what you're going to allow inside your app. In this example, we're going to take a look at props and maybe some things that aren't necessarily mistakes but could be done better. So I really see this a lot. I have a base button here and the base button has a message in it and maybe it has a whole bunch of other props. So in this case, I just have message, but it might have a message. It might have like classes. It might have a data size, a whole, a whole bunch of props on here. So you may be thinking like, well, that's just the way Vue is. You, in Vue, you create this props. And by the way, I'm using the options API here, but it's very similar if you're using the script setup using something called define props but you basically create and you have to define every single prop and then you can kind of insert them and do whatever you want inside here. And so that will work, but typically what happens is you end up having components with a whole lot of props. And I'm not saying that's bad and that's not always wrong, but there are other ways to do this. So first in this example, let's say I wanted to add in uh, this info uh, as a class into this button here. So I could create like a supposed, uh, like a, an array of class names that would be like an array here of every single class, including info and so on and so forth, and then define that in my base button and then have it attached to here. But there's obviously a much easier way. And to do that, first, you have to understand that in Vue, it automatically assumes that any attributes that you add to a component that's not defined in a prop, it gets added to the outermost element inside your template. So in this case, the outermost element that surrounds everything is a button. So you can see here, I have this info and data size small. I can just do this. I can just do class info, hit enter. Cool, it went ahead and updated. If I take off this class and have no class and save it, and I go back here and I make sure I save it, you can see it's back to the way it was uh, before. I can even do the same thing with this data attribute. So there's this data small size small. So if I add data size small and I look at it again, cool, it actually made it a little bit smaller and if I wanted to, I don't know, I can do it like 0.2 rem. It's even smaller. So you can see it's definitely taking whatever values I pass into the component and automatically adding it to here without having me to automatically doing it. And I see this pretty common with people who, who aren't familiar with the prop system in Vue. It can be a little confusing. Another thing you can do is let's say I want this class info here, but I have I don't have, I have multiple elements. So in view three, you don't have to have one like root element, everything surrounds. So I could have like a, a div here that says title uh, information about the button. And if I save this, then I have information about the button. I come back here and I have this class info. You see here, it didn't work. Like if I kind of look at inspect it and I go to the console and and I just kind of look right here. It did 
I see I, I don't have it anywhere in here. It doesn't, it didn't add it to anywhere. In fact, if I go to the console, it gives me this warning that I have extraneous non-prop attributes class. And so, but you can fix this. So you can go back to the template here and you can add in inherit adders colon false. And if, if you do that, that will get rid of the error message. So if I go back to inspect, go back to the console and I refresh it here and I come back here, back to the console, you see there's nothing there. I don't have any errors, which is good, but I still want to be able to add those attributes to the button. So to do that, I can just add the secret code here, vbind equals dollar sign adders. And if I do that and I refresh it, cool, there it is. So now it's working as expected. It added it to the, it added it as a class on the button itself. If I wanted to, I can do this. I can do class equals adders.class and this will work the same way. So I refresh it and I put this colon here so it acts at, binds it. So cool, it's working the same way. So I just did dollar colon gla, uh, class, adders class, and now I'm able to like specifically target different things onto my template without having to pass them all in and define every single prop on it. One last thing uh, to do that I could see too is people don't realize in Vue, especially if you're starting out, that you can use slots and they're pretty powerful. So instead of passing this message as a text, as a prop, I can just simply get rid of this message here, get rid of this message here, and then in the opening and closing, I just add this slot like this S-O-L-O-T. And now if I go back to my app view, I can just delete this message and I can put the message in between the opening and closing brackets of the component. So it's sort of like React Children if you're familiar with that, but now I can put in, this is a button. If I hit enter there, this is a button. So now it has done exactly what I wanted to. And I could put in whole HTML elements in here I can put in, if I wanted to put in like my fav icons or something else, instead of having to figure out every single prop and every single icon and how I'm going to do that, I can just simply add it to the opening and closing brackets here, use this slot and do it. And you can even be more, I did whole videos on slots, but you can have name slots, you can have scope slots. So in other words, you can have slots that like take information from the child component and bring it up to the parent component. You can have multiple levels of slots. So it's really powerful, it's worth, learning if you're a Vue developer and something I see a lot that people don't use enough. Well, I hope you guys learned something. That was a whirlwind of things. There's a whole bunch more. If you guys like these videos, make sure you leave a comment below of what you liked about it. And if you've ever run into these things or if you've never run into these things, that'd be great. Also, uh, I also offer mentoring and other things. I'll put a link in the description. If you guys wanna learn more, I teach Vue and other things. Take care.